Good morning. So today we're gonna be making yogurt and I get lots and lots of questions on my Instagram about how to make yogurt and what's the best method and things like that. Yogurt is one of the very first dairy products I learned to make when we got our dairy goat about 15, maybe 18 years ago is when we first got our, our, when we got our first dairy goat and we had an excess of milk and I learned how to make yogurt. Um, yogurt is something that we make weekly, sometimes twice a week here. Um, depends on how fast the family is eating the yogurt. Um, but today I'm going to show you the traditional method of making yogurt. And then I'm also going to show you my favorite way, which is using the Instapot. Um, but I'm going to show you how I first learned to make yogurt. Same um, concept, just using different tools. And I'm also going to show you the easiest, most hands-off way for making yogurt. So first of all, um, I have to go get the milk. Um, and if you've been here on, if you've been following us on Instagram, you know that we have added another milk cow to our herd. So I'm going to start with two gallons of milk because I have plenty of milk right now because we have two cows that are milking. And I'm gonna give some of the yogurt to our daughter and son-in-law and the rest of it will be for my family. So when I'm skimming the cream, all I do is I put my ladle right under the surface of the cream and that allows the cream to run right into the ladle. And then I just keep doing that until some of the milk starts coming in. You don't have to skim the milk for making yogurt. You can make whole milk yogurt as well. And there you can see some of the milk is showing through. That's a sign that I've got all the cream, plus my cream jar is full. So now I've got these two jars. They were full gallons of milk. Now I've got two partial gallons of skim milk and I've got two quarts of cream, and I'm gonna save this for turning into butter another day. There's yesterday's cream waiting to be churned into butter, and there is yesterday's butter that has already been churned. But today is all about yogurt, so we're gonna turn these two into yogurt. So the first step in making yogurt is heating it to 181 degrees. So my um, Instapot is an actual Instapot brand and it has a yogurt setting. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go down to custom and then I'm gonna select high because that is 181 degrees. And I'm gonna hit start. And now this is gonna heat it to 181 degrees and then it'll beep and shut off. And I'll tell you why. Why we need to heat it to 181 degrees in just a minute. But I'm gonna put the lid on and we're just gonna leave that alone and it'll tell me when it's at 181 degrees. So now, this is the way I made yogurt before I had my Instapot. So I put something in the pot. So in the bottom of my pot, I just have this that actually goes with the Instapot. Um, but you can use, you can use a can lid or you could even use a, um, a pot holder. I've set my jar on the pot holder, on a pot holder before. But this is just to protect your jar from direct heat. So now we're gonna put some water in here. Okay, so I've got my water and I've got my milk 
And now this is what I used <laughs> to take the temperature of my milk. And you can just walk by and take the temperature, but I use this setup so that I can see what's happening all the time. And I wanna take the temperature of the center of the milk. I don't want my thermometer to slide all the way down to the bottom or be against the side of the jar. So that's why I use this setup. And originally I had just a small candy thermometer that wasn't so long, but that one quit working. So now I have to use a meat thermometer, which is much taller. So I've turned this on high and I really should have gone to get a taller pot because I have a feeling this is gonna make a mess. But this was the tallest one that I have up here. I would have had to run down to the basement to get a taller one. So if we make a mess, we'll just clean it up. Okay, a couple things. Um, why did I just not just pour the milk directly into the pot and take the temperature? Um, because doing it this way with water around the milk is a more even slow heating of the milk, which is what you want. You don't wanna bring it to temperature real fast um, because that destroys some of the beneficial nutrients in the milk. So we wanna bring it up slowly. And number two is when I'm done here, I'm only going to, this jar already had milk in it anyway, so I would have to wash, I would have to wash the jar regardless this pot with boiling water, all I have to do is dump the water out and dry it and it's ready to go back into the cupboard. Um, milk has a tendency to scorch um, when it's on, in a pot. So this is just, it cuts down on dishes and this is a more secure way for me to heat my milk. Okay, the other thing, why heat your milk to 181 degrees? There is yogurt recipes and um, that don't call for heating your milk, especially um, when you want to have raw milk yogurt. Um, now this is raw milk, but when I heat it to 181 degrees, it is pasteurized milk. The reason I heat my yogurt to 181 degrees is because I get much more consistent results. And the reason for that is when you make yogurt with only heating it to say 110 or 112 and some recipes say 115 degrees, you're not killing all the bacteria that's in there. And now granted, a lot of that bacteria that's in there is beneficial bacteria but when you don't kill all of the bacteria, it's kind of a by guess or by gosh, which bacteria you are actually incubating when it comes to the incubation period. So you might have clabbered milk instead of yogurt. Now, when I heat it to 181 degrees, I am killing all the bacteria that's there and then I'm adding my active yogurt culture, which is a form of bacteria or is a different strain of bacteria. And that is the only bacteria that I'm then incubating. So I heat it to 181 degrees to get consistent results. You can make yogurt without heating your milk to 181 degrees, but you're probably not gonna get very consistent results. Sometimes you're gonna have clabbered milk. Sometimes it might be really tart and sometimes you'll actually get yogurt. But what yogurt is, is a specific bacteria that's introduced into the milk and then it's incubated to make yogurt. So there is why I heat my milk to 181 degrees because it gives me consistent results and my family loves yogurt enough that I don't wanna spend time making yogurt just to end up having not yogurt or having it clabbered, having clabbered milk and then I have, you know, a whole gallon of clabbered milk to use in baking and things like that. So there is why I heat my milk to 181 degrees to make my yogurt. So the Instapot beeped and is all done. So that means that it brought this milk up to 181 degrees. And I'm just gonna take the lid off because our next step is to cool this milk down. And 
we started this one a little later um, and it is getting there it's about at 160 so we're getting there pretty fast almost there so now that this has reached 181 degrees we turned the burner off and we're just gonna let it sit there and cool down a little bit before we remove it so it's gonna take a couple hours for your yogurt to cool down enough to add your yogurt starter or culture and as your milk cools, you'll see this little skin develop on top. Now, you can leave that skin and mix it in when you make your yogurt, but I take the skin off because my milk cools faster when I take that skin off because that skin kind of seals it in there. And number two, I like to eat that milk skin. Anyway, my milk is about 112. So this milk is about at 112 degrees, which is perfect for adding my starter. I like to have it anywhere between, I worry less about the proper temperature when it's in the Instapot because I know that the Instapot will heat it to where it needs to be for proper incubation but anywhere between 100 and 115 is okay to add your starter. Over 115 and you're going to risk killing the culture and then it won't um, incubate or you won't get yogurt because you killed that bacteria that you added to your warm milk. So this is ready for adding the culture. Now you can purchase fancy yogurt cultures. Um, you can get them anywhere online. I just use yogurt as a culture. As long as it on the ingredient says live and active cultures, you can use it. Um, you can use yogurt that you made last week or from previous patches, batches of yogurt. Um, you can do it either way. Um, but today I'm using a bit of yogurt from our store-bought yogurt that I keep in the refrigerator just for, just as a starter. And I am using, I don't usually measure my culture, but this is going to be about one fourth cup. I'm just gonna mix it around. I'm gonna use my wire whisk. Now, I'm gonna put my lid on. So now that my Instapot is ready to incubate. I've got the yogurt light flashing. I'm gonna hit this and I'm going to go down to custom and then I can go up and I can select how long I want my yogurt to incubate. Now, the longer you, longer you incubate it, the more tart it's going to be. And I don't want, my family does not like tart yogurt. So I am going to start with three hours and then I'm going to check it. And we're gonna see if it's set. If it's set after three hours, we're gonna call that good yogurt. So here is our milk that's cooling down. 
and because this is more milk, like it's deeper, it's cooling down a little slower than what the milk in the Instapot did. And it's still a little warm. It's like at 130, which is still too warm to add the starter. So we're just gonna let that cool down a bit longer. So this milk is now cooled down to under 120 degrees. It's about 115. So I'm gonna add my starter. I'm gonna turn my lid on. So I've got my biggest and fluffiest towel and I'm just gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna wrap that up real nice and I'm gonna pin this all together with a clothespin. So while my yogurt was heating and then cooling, I baked a batch of granola bars for the kids' lunches. I baked them in the oven, and that means that my oven is still warm. And that is where I'm gonna incubate this yogurt. So I baked the bars about an hour ago, so the oven should not be too hot anymore, and it'll be about just right for incubating this yogurt. So when I make yogurt this way on the stovetop, I watch the temperature as that milk cools, I watch the temperature more closely because I want it to not cool off so much that it doesn't properly incubate. So as soon as that temperature comes down below 118, I'm gonna add my starter, wrap it up and tuck it into a warm place so that it can incubate. With the Instapot method, I don't worry quite as much because I know that the, incubate, the Instapot is gonna keep it at the proper incubation temperature that I need. So I don't worry too much about the temperature getting too low when I'm using the Instapot. Okay, so this has been about three hours. And we're gonna check and see if this is set. Oh yeah, you can see. You can see that this is set after about three hours. Beautiful. And I've unwrapped this one. And this looks like it's set as well. Oh yeah, this is beautifully set as well. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna strain our yogurt. Um, you can use your yogurt just like this, but we, my family likes a yogurt that's more thick and this will get runny if we start scooping if we start serving it, this is gonna get more runny. So we're gonna strain some whey out of it and make a thicker, more Greek style yogurt. And now remember the only thing I've added so far is milk and culture. I have not added any sugar or flavoring of any kind. Now we're gonna let that strain for a couple hours. So 
So all that whey that's running off is also carbs. So in the end, when we strain a lot of this whey off, we're gonna have a low carb, high protein snack or meal for the family. Okay, so when your yogurt is still warm, it really doesn't take long at all for it to strain. So I strained the first batch. And you can tell I've got a couple cups away. And I will save that way for cheese making. Now we're gonna strain the yogurt that I incubated in the oven. Hey Mitchell, it's your turn to churn some butter. So we've strained some more whey off of this yogurt. And this really isn't the best cheesecloth for it. I really like to use kitchen towels or flour sacks, I think they call them. But this is the one that was clean. So this is the one that we're using this week. So now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to mix this all together. So this will thicken up as it cools too. If I refrigerate it, it'll get nice and thick. Okay, Mitchell, go get your rice. So there is all the yogurt that I made and I will refrigerate this and it'll be just perfect consistency for breakfast tomorrow morning. This one's for our daughter and son-in-law. This one, these two are for the family. So now remember, if you want a more tart yogurt, you incubate it longer. The longer you incubate it, the more tart it gets. And also the more often I reuse this, um, this yogurt as a starter, the faster it incubates and the, so then the more tart it gets. So let's say I leave a little bit of this and in a couple days I wanna make more yogurt and I use this yogurt instead of the store-bought yogurt. And this has more active cultures, live and active cultures in it, so it incubates faster. So I'll have a more tart yogurt in less time the more often I use this because it's more filled with live and active cultures, therefore it incubates faster. So if you don't want a real tart yogurt, just incubate it less time. Um, you can also make this with pasteurized milk that does not have to be raw milk. And with pasteurized milk, you can just heat it to 120 degrees and then let it cool a little bit and add your starter. 
If you're starting with pasteurized milk, you do not first have to heat it to 181 degrees. And I will show how we eat it. This is just plain. There's no sugar or anything added. Um, and when we serve it, we add maple syrup and some fruit and maybe some granola. This is all the way that I strained off of those, off of that yogurt. It wasn't quite two gallons, but this is all the way that I strained off. Now, whey is, makes some beautiful bread, so you could replace the water or the milk in your bread recipe with this whey. I will save some of it as a culture for cheese making, and whatever I don't use will go to the pigs, and it will help lower our feed bill for that day.